Not every Camino has a Hollywood happy ending. The noticeable percentage of pilgrims don't make it till the end and this is kind of my first Camino story. And that's all because of the wrongly chosen shoes. Santiago! Santiago! Do you see this unshaven, overconfident or rather slightly mad walking vagabond? Yep, that's me on my first Camino a while back. It was a Camino del Norte, a 2821 kilometer journey on the coastal of northern Spain, filled with joy, the raw beauty of nature, unburdened freedom, and yes, laughter and dancing. And here am I at the end of that journey, calm, collected, without the backpack, no longer jumping around. What happened? One, my backpack was too heavy, leading to the knee injury. And the two, my well-made but poorly fitted shoes caused Achilles issues and even ripped toenail. <laughs> had I not changed my shoes in the final moments of the pilgrimage, I might have had to stop 120 kilometers before Santiago after making 700 kilometers already. So we've been talking about shoes before, but this video in particular delves into the deep fundamentals of the correct choice based on the foot anatomy, the terrain you traverse, durability and the correct fit, which often is misunderstood. It's not about the brands we will mention in the end of this video, but it's focusing about those four key elements that will allow you to make your correct decision, ensuring that the next pair of shoes is the last one you will ever need. To know yourself is to look at yourself. To know your face is to look at the mirror. And to know your feet is to look at your feet. Which of these pictures most characterize you? Some of us have high arches while others have flat feet. And then there is everything in between. Your right shoe accommodates your specific arch type, providing support where you need it the most. Which is the place that your shoe bottom is the most used? This will indicate you directly what type of arch you have. Why it matters? Choosing the shoes based on the arch type is crucial because it significantly impacts your comfort, performance and the risk of injury. The right shoes help distribute force evenly, reducing injury risk like plantar fasciitis and improving comfort and walking efficiently. Wearing the right shoes prevents chronic pain and supports overall skeletal health ensuring long-term well-being and performance. The problem is so big, there are an entire list of shoes created for a specific type of arch. The my story is different because I haven't chosen my first shoes according to the arch type. My arch type is quite normal, so it didn't really cause me a lot of inconvenience. It wasn't the main factor that led me to changing my shoes just before the Santiago. My biggest problem was the poorly fitted shoe by its size, but this one we will talk in a few minutes in the next part of this video. What is a true size? Spoiler alert, this is not the normal size that you actually wear. On my first Camino I have chosen a half a size bigger shoe than they were normally, but I haven't taken into consideration a few important things like different shoes have a different numbers. And when you're trying the hiking shoe or any other shoe for the mountain, you have to include the thicker socks, which I also haven't thought about, which led me to many problems and half a year, nearly half a year without my toenail. A perfect fit is non-negotiable. A shoe that's too tight or too loose can lead to blisters, discomfort and even injury. Good overall advice is to pick a shoe a half or a one size bigger. Why? Look at this. This is the tool that you can find in any bigger shop, which you will show you if your shoes are too tight when walking downhill. Normally, a half of the size will still be on the edge. Adding up that the feet swells while you walk a lot, it might not be the perfect choice. So why would I just get the bigger shoe? When the shoe is too big, it is, it's too loose. It loses the stability, moves constantly and produces rushes and therefore blisters. Another paramount detail is the wide toe box. 
Is normal shoe constricting your toes, like literally squeezing your toes inside of the shoes, that might mean that you have a different type of the foot. And not every foot is a geisha foot, and having in consideration that long walking leads to swelling of the foot, problem can even exaggerate. So if you feel that your feet are sometimes like prisoners of the shoe, consider looking into the white toe box shoe. Again, there are entire lists of shoes only based on the white toe box. Gore-Tex or no Gore-Tex? This is the question. Or rather, to shield or to breathe. The choice between breathability and waterproofing largely depends on the time of the year you plan to embark on the Camino. This is the crucial consideration. The only way to achieve a fully waterproof on the Camino is by wearing waterproof shoes and pairing it with the rain pants to prevent water from entering to shoes from above. Any other method is likely to result in wet feet. We've tested Gore-Tex shoes over entire season and at the end of the season went to India to do the Dandi march of 400 kilometers in deep India in the full monsoon season. And guess what? We got wet. Really wet. We there. Eh? We are there. Uh, okay. Until I don't get dry. Dry? <laughs> I want to be dry. The downside of Gore-Tex is reducing breathability, which during warmer periods can lead to overheating and excessive sweating. Additionally, once wet, Gore-Tex footwear takes longer to dry. But it is recommended in the colder part of the season as well with the light rains or, or some puddles on the way. So many pilgrims consider this and eventually prepare to get wet. I believe there is no one fit answer for all. And many people from our community, they absolutely love Gore-Tex and, and others, they actually prefer something really breathable and really easy to dry. And if you find any values in this video, give it a like. And if you would like to see more, subscribe to this channel. You will get notified when the next video is on preparing yourself for your Camino or for any other hiking or long distance trail. Comment down below your experience of how you've chosen your shoes, how do you do it, and maybe this experience, like my unfortunately bad experience, will help others to make their journey and maybe even finish in Camino de Santiago without major problems. Next, let's consider the terrain. The Camino offers the variety of terrains, so your shoes should strike the right balance of flexibility and support for the terrain you will encounter most often. Let's break down the common terrains along the Camino and the best shoe features for each. French Camino Rugged mountain paths in the Pyrenees Rolling hills of the Meseta Vineyards and agriculture fields paved roads and cobblestone streets in towns. Portuguese Camino. Coastal paths along the Atlantic, flat to gentle hills in the countryside, urban paved streets through cities like Porto or Lisbon, forested trails and rural dirt roads. Camino del Norte, the Northern Camino. Coastal cliffs and beaches, mountain terrains with steep ascents and descents rural roads and forest paths, urban areas with paved surfaces. Primitive way, Camino Primitivo, rugged mountain paths through Asturias, dense forests and remote natural trails, some stretches of modern pavement in urban areas, steep and challenging climbs. Each route offers a blend of many different terrains, delighting and challenging pilgrims with diverse terrains and physical challenges. This brings me back to my own experience on my first Camino, Camino del Norte, and pretty much I thought that I gonna do some hiking experience. And it was kind of true for the first part of the Basque country. But when we left the Basque country, when we left the first part of Camino del Norte, the road become more and more paved, cities and villages. My hiking shoes, fantastically made but rigid, 
started to give me hard times. Durability matters. You should, should be capable of withdrawing the miles ahead and you're going to work for some time. Investing in this particular part of equipment is the most important thing. A pilgrim or a long distance walker or hiker can do. Consider the hundreds of kilometers and miles spent preparing for the journey and then walking, hiking the Camino or any other long distance path. And the last thing you want, does your shoes actually fall into pieces or the stitches will break or the glue will unglue? That's the last thing we really want. Our pick for this season, for Erica, that's the Merrill Antora. A glove-like shoe that fits perfectly to her feet and she's really happy with that. It says for many different purposes, we're going to walk the French Camino in the primitive way, also San Salvador. So she will need a mixture of both, of paved paths, also the rooked trails. And for me, the Hoka sandals. And I tried it to mix something in between the sandals like Teva or Lokin and something much more adaptable like Hokas. And, and I figured out this could be a good idea to try. But don't take my word for that. I will try them first. You're going to do a thousand kilometers or maybe even more with those shoes. And then we're going to give you a full idea of how those shoes were. Other popular choices for the Camino for these seasons are definitely Ultras, definitely Hocas, and definitely Nike Trailers, as well as Topos, the new thing of this year. Also, the big brand coming high. ON, which is on clouds, made in Switzerland. And there are a few brands to consider and they all make the shoes specifically for different type of feet. Check it out. And if you want to know what other items are the absolute must for your journey, you should check this video here, which will tell you what we put inside of our backpacks.